Hi, I am Sharath from Sharath the Geek and through this video I am going to explain what are the ports or components inside a motherboard. As you can see in the video, this is a motherboard and this is an AMD motherboard with an MSI motherboard. So that is, this is a motherboard with a socket that is AMD's. So this will only work with AMD CPUs and this is pretty old I guess. I bought it 5 years ago and still the here. Now through this video I am going to tell you what are the parts like this. This is the PCI X slot that will be used for graphic card. And I will be into this so without any further ado let's begin now first let's begin with the CPU now this is a so let me zoom in a bit now this is the AMD CPU and this is not the CPU actually this is the CPU cooler as you can see this fan rotates every time and this fan is connected to a Board that is written in chaff fan that is written on the motherboard that's a PCI on the PCI board chaff fan and you connect it so that you can you can get energy from the SMPS now before we go into those things let me tell something about SMPS SMPS is a thing that is also known as PSU that's power supply unit it supplies power to your motherboard in a very aggressive manner so it will control the amount of power that is supplied and if you buy a local SMPS this is this may be not that good your motherboard may fry off now let's get to the components again and again. Now these ports are called the PCI slot. This is a series of ports that are used in a computer for that, so that you can add some network cards, sound cards, or graphic cards that your favorite graphic card, an Nvidia graphic card, onto your motherboard. Before we tell about those PCI Express slots are are, are on different speeds. It is 1x, 16x, and and I would suggest you to use 16x for graphic card, 16x PCI Express slot, and this is a 1x PCI Express slot. And this, these are all different PCI Express now and I would suggest you to add your graphics card here rather than this because these are all for network cards and sound cards. Well, let's get to the next thing as soon as possible. Well, as you can see these things are ports that you connect frequently and this is the VGA port. This is the DV, this is for printer that for all IBM series printers and it's very useful for the most part. And these are PS slash 2 ports that are used to, con used to connect mouse and keyboard. And this is the ports for your audio. This is an audio card present in the motherboard so that you can receive audio in a good fashion. And these are the Ethernet port, USB 2.0 port. In the newer generation of motherboards, you get USB 3.0 ports as well as HDMI slot. So what is the speciality between VGA versus HDMI? Now HDMI is always a digital version and VGA is an analog version but thus HDMI provides a bit more of passion to your computer. Now let's get to the next thing. This is the heat sink. In modern motherboards, you do not get these heat sinks as you see, like this. In older versions, you had a very big heat sink, but that, that was also discontinued in the recent past, and you don't have these things at all. It's being controlled by your CPU, that's why our new motherboards get so hot for a while after using. Now, let's get to the next thing that is the RAM. Now, this is the RAM slot, so let me remove the RAM. And this is the DDR2 RAM, and and I would say the RAM versions on your motherboard depends on the motherboard itself. There are four variants as of now for the RAM DDR, DDR2, DDR3 and DDR has been discontinued for a while and DDR2 is still available in an old motherboard that uses for example Intel Core Duo motherboards does, does need DDR2 RAM and this is pretty bad. This is a DDR2 2GB RAM and this is it and you, can, you have two slots that is in the green or the orange and in, in certain motherboards you have blue color as well according to the preferences and this is the motherboard and you just insert this according to the hinge in this bracket now this board is called the is the port where you connect your SMPS via in your SMPS you have a 24 pin pin, pin ATX cable but also a 4 pin ATX cable that 4 pin ATX cable goes here and a 24 pin ATX cable goes here so we now understood that the 4 pin ATX cable is the this is the 4 pin ATX cable as you can see yeah I think you have saw that now let me come to the next part in the motherboard that is SATA ports as you can see from red wires precisely speaking you see a red wire coming from this these are the two SATA ports uh, these SATA ports are used for connecting your hard disk SSD and your DVD drives and and there are two variants in SATA one is a SATA 6 
GB per second mother thing and one is a Sara 3 GB per second thing. So I do prefer you to use this Sara 60 6 GB per second thing. But this motherboard doesn't contain that 6 GB. It's only con it only contains 3 GB because this is an old motherboard and in my new motherboard that's of Asus HH1MCS that I built with a new PC had a 6.0 6 GB SATA board. So that's SATA and this is also another SATA for for more add up now let me come to the next port that is this pata port well pata sata is there a rhyming is that a, is that a rhyming word yes pata is a port for connecting the whole hard disk that contain only pata ports so what is pata pata is actually a wire tape it looks like a tape i will give a photo in the video itself look this is the pata pata port and as you can see this is the pata port that's it now the next thing in this list is this called as a CMOS battery. This is the CMOS battery and CMOS battery is used for controlling your BIOS in an efficient manner. So let me open this CMOS battery up. And as you can see this is the CMOS battery and it, 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 use, it is used for correcting the timing in the BIOS as well as controlling. It's a bit hard to take it out so I don't know what to tell. And next for also is this thing. This thing is used for older versions of SMPS that uses some kind of pata like structure. They do not have any pins, they have a recurring insider. That means you have to notch it onto this, but these are not frequently used since they are damageable in an easy manner. So I think that was the end of this video and if I take it down and please I do suggest that don't touch the underneath part of your motherboard since these motherboards are electrostatic in nature they do cause some damage to the motherboard so don't use it it is really not useful as of now so i i think this video was helpful to all of you guys and if you think this video was helpful to you do latch on to the like button and if you want more videos like this do put a comment on the comment section also and if possible i will make a video and do subscribe me to watch that video and i'm sure from sure the geek and you guys have a great day